Hush not your heart and don't cry. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Judy Aiken. I'm a 70 year old retired registered nurse from Portland, Maine. Where I live with my husband of 47 years, our two beagles, and our son and granddaughter live nearby. Also, for over four decades, I've battled psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis that have taken a heavy toll on my body. But nothing could prepare me for the financial strain that came with the high, high cost of the drugs I need to live my life, including Enbrel, which comes with a staggering list price. Last year alone, I spent over $9,000 out of pocket just to afford this one drug. As a nurse, I counseled patients on the importance of taking their medications consistently, but I have to admit that sometimes I found myself unable to follow my own advice and have been known to skip a dose here and there. For years, it felt like no one was standing up to Big Pharma for patients like me. But thanks to President Biden and Vice President Harris's Inflation Reduction Act, that is changing. Now, Enbrel is one of the first 10 drugs up for Medicare negotiation. The thought of a lower list price for this essential medication feels like a lifeline. President Biden didn't just make a promise, he kept it. Because of the Biden-Harris administration's actions, my husband and I can finally breathe a little easier. That's why it is my great honor to introduce the team who leads the fight to put patients above profits. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, and Vice President Kamala Harris. so many friends. It is good to see so many friends. And I, I want to thank, thank you. I, thank you. And let's please thank you. I love you back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And, 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 and I know we all thank Judy for sharing her story. I think we all know it takes a very special person who has dedicated over 40 years of their life to do the work that Judy has done as a nurse, that work being what to care about other people in a way that is about lifting them up and caring about their well-being. So Judy, we thank you so very much for being here today. I want to recognize the incredible Governor Wes Moore. Who's here with Don and their son. And, and Wes, I, I'm so thankful to you for all that you do in service to our nation in so many different ways and your friendship. But in particular, to share such a personal story as you have, and I know it, it takes a lot out of you to share that story, 
but to do it in a way that is about lifting up other people and helping, hopefully, others who are not in this room, understanding how real people are impacted every day about this issue and by this issue. Thank you. I want to recognize the people of our administration, including Secretary Becerra, who is here. The bold administrator, Brooks Lassour, who is here. My dear friend and former colleague, Senator Ben Cardin. Representative Barragon, the chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Representative Mfume for all of your years of leadership. And I want to recognize your next United States Senator, Angela Also Brooks. And I've worked with her over the years. I'm telling you, Marilyn, you're going to do a great thing when you send her to the United States Senate. And of course, I could speak all afternoon about the person that I am standing on this stage with. It's for many, many reasons, including few leaders in our nation have done more on so many issues, including to expand access to affordable health care like than Joe Biden. And today we take the next step, thank you, Joe, forward in our fight. deeply, every senior in our nation should be able to live with security, stability, and dignity. And so in the United States of America, no senior should have to choose between either filling their prescription or paying their rent. That's the subject of today. Because we know for far too long, far too many of our seniors have struggled to afford their medication. And as a result, seniors have been forced to spend their time trying to figure out how they are going to be able to fill a prescription like insulin based on the doctor's prescription, which is about saving their life, or whether they'd have to ration their pills to be able to make it stretch through a month. And why, we all know, but let's ask, why are, prescri why are prescription drugs so expensive? I will tell you. Well, one big reason is for years, Big Pharma has often inflated the price of life-saving medications. Often charging many times what it would cost to make just to increase their profits. And millions of Americans have suffered as a result. My entire career, I have worked to hold bad actors accountable and lower the cost of prescription drugs. As Attorney General of California, I took on pharmaceutical companies for deceptive marketing and illegally inflating the cost of drugs. And we won billions of dollars. As a United States Senator, I fought to pass laws that would make healthcare more affordable and accessible for all Americans. 
and as Vice President, together with Joe Biden, our President, we finally addressed the long-standing issue that for years was one of the biggest challenges on this subject, which was that Medicare was prohibited by law from negotiating lower drug prices. And those costs then got passed on to our seniors, but not anymore. <laughs> Two years ago, we gave Medicare the power to negotiate lower prescription drug prices for the first time in history. And here is why that matters. It is nearly impossible for a patient to negotiate lower prices by themselves. Just think about that. Somebody who needs the medication, who may be suffering from a serious illness, that they would buy themselves be able to negotiate against a big drug company to lower that prices is virtually impossible. It's one person against a huge corporation. But Medicare represents more than 65 million people. And so Medicare, has collective bargaining power. And now, Medicare can use that power to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Big Pharma and negotiate lower drug prices. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. of not only tens of millions of people on Medicare, but also millions of Americans on Medicare who have long-term disabilities. And understand, as a result of our negotiations, the government will also pay less than for prescription drugs. And think about what that means in terms of paying, helping taxpayers save money, whether or not they take these medications. So all of this is to say, two years ago as Vice President, I was proud to cast the tie-breaking vote that sent the bill that gave, that gave Medicare the power to negotiate and let it get to the President's desk. And I was proud when our President, Joe Biden, signed that bill into law. In the two years since, we've been using this new power to lower the price of life-saving medications and now to announce the result of those negotiations. It is my eternal and great, great, great honor, I have to tell you, to serve with this most extraordinary human being and American and leader, our President, Joe Biden. Thank you, Kamala. Well, I love you guys, too. I've been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. First time I sponsored a bill to let Medicare negotiate the price of drugs was in 1973 as a freshman senator with a guy named Frank Church from the state of Idaho. Folks, I have an incredible partner the progress we've made, she's going to make one hell of a president. And Judy, thank you for sharing your story. It's a really one for far too many Americans. People like my dad used to lay in bed at night when they lost his insurance, as a, the, the company he worked for, staring at the ceiling. Literally, and you've all experienced, you know, people who have experienced this, wondering what in God's name happened if my wife gets breast cancer, or if I get sick, or my children get seriously ill. What happens? What in God's name? How can we pay for the drugs, prescription drugs? I'm serious. These are the discussions. You know it. We have, do we have enough insurance? 
Can we afford the medical bills? We'll have to sell the house to get a second mortgage. There are discussions that took place in my house and your house. Kamala and I both get it. We know it isn't just about health care. It's about your dignity. No, it's about your dignity. It's about peace of mind. It's about security. It's about taking care of your family. It's about giving folks just a little bit more breathing room. That's all. Look, I believe that health care should be a right, not a privilege in America. And Cam and I are here today to make a major announcement in our efforts to lower, lower the extraordinary high prescription drug prices. But before I do, I want to thank Governor Westmore and members of Congress. I served in the Senate for 270 years. I know I only look 40, but I'm a little bit older. <laughs> the longest time I was too damn young because I only was 29 when I got elected. Now I'm too damn old. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing in between. One of the finest, most decent men I've ever worked with, and I think of my think of integrity, is Ben Cardin. Stand up, Ben. Stand up. I really mean it. I measure the people I work with by their integrity. He does what he says and says what he does. Look, folks, also, you know, Nanette Barrigan, for the longest time, she tried to pretend with me she was Irish and then Barrigan. <laughs> she's a great friend, and she's one of the great leaders in this country for the Hispanic community. <laughs> Congressman Fume, where are you? Stand up, man. I've never once gone to this man and asked for help, and I haven't gotten it. Not one single time. Thank you, pal. Thank you. And you're soon to be senator. Where is she? The hell lot easier job than being a county executive. I was a county, I was a county official. They expect you can solve every problem. You don't have the authority to do it. You don't have enough money. <laughs> but I hope I'm looking forward. I told her I campaign for or against whichever helped the most. <laughs> Along with members of my administration, Javier Becerra, HHS. <laughs> my favorite, Brooks Lasalle, CMS administrators here today. And let me say something. We're all, we're all thinking about my good friend, and he is a really good friend for a long time, Steny Hoyer. He represents the western shore of Delaware. <laughs> you all think we're kidding. We have that fight all the time. I wish him a speedy recovery. I understand he's doing well. <laughs> Folks, this is a fight all of us have been fighting for a long time, taking on Big Pharma. We pay more for prescription drugs. It's not hyperbole. We pay more for prescription drugs than any advanced nation in the world. I could take out an Air Force One, and if you have a prescription from a drug company in America, and fly you to Toronto, Canada, fly you to Paris, France, fly you to Belfast, anywhere around the world, and get you the same prescription filled for the same company for 40 to 60 percent less than we pay for it here. Too many Americans can't afford the drugs they badly need for life and death. So they skip doses, cut pills in half, forego prescriptions entirely because the prescription of drugs are totally unaffordable. The woman I, you all met, the nurse you just met, she paid $9,000, I mean, excuse me, $900 a month. Well, guess what, man? She's going to pay nowhere near that. $9,000, $9,000. She's going to pay, guess what? Beginning January, every single prescription drug she has, including, God forbid, if she needs a really expensive drug, like a cancer drug, maximum she ever has to pay is $2,000, period. <laughs> That's why from the time I was in the Senate, I worked tireless to give Medicare the power to negotiate lower drug prices, just like the Department of Veterans Affairs. 
In fact, I was reminded by staff today, one of the first major bills I worked on was in 1973. I co-sponsored legislation led by Senator Frank Church to let, nego let, let Medicare negotiate the cost of drugs. 1973, this fight's been going on. You know, the VA pays, as they should, 50 percent less than Medicare because VA can negotiate the prices. But for years, Big Pharma blocked Medicare from negotiating lower drug prices. As a consequence, they're able to maintain the exorbitant price increases and the profits are uncalled for. Look, but this time, we finally beat Big Pharma. And I might add, with no help from Republicans, not a single Republican voted for this bill, period. Not one in the entire Congress. Now, the reason I say that is not to make a political point about them, not if they had gotten their lesson, but guess what? They want to, they, the guy we're running against, what's his name? <laughs> Donald Dump or Donald whatever. They want to get rid of this, what we passed. They, they're fighting to get rid of what we've just passed. No, I'm serious. No help from Republicans passed the Inflation Reduction Act thanks to the tie-breaking vote of Kamala made it possible. <laughs> Folks, it really matters. For example, take the insulin needed to treat diabetes. The guy who invented that insulin 100 years ago didn't put a patent on it because he wanted it to be available for everybody. He didn't even patent it. Well, guess you know how much it costs those companies to make that insulin? Ten dollars, T-E-N. That's the God's truth. Ten dollars, number one. Number two, to package it and ship it, you might get it up to thirteen dollars. But they were charging up to four hundred bucks a month for it. But now they can't charge more than thirty-five dollars a month. It's a big deal. Oh, look, thirty-five dollars a month. I, these guys still make enormous profits. That's three times what it costs them to make it. The initial legislation capped the cost for everyone on who needed that insulin. How many of you know anybody needs insulin for diabetes? Raise your hand. Okay. Well, guess what? For the next three months we got here, I'm not leaving here in Kamala when she's president, going to make sure if we don't get it done, everybody should qualify for that $35 a month. Every American. I mean it. Folks, that's not all. The same law I wrote, we wrote, means starting in January of this year, every senior in the United States of America, no matter what their cost of drugs, and like I said, some of these cancer drugs are 12,000 bucks a year. Every single penny they spend, they never have to spend more than $2,000 a year for all drugs, all drugs. And we're gonna fight to make sure everyone qualifies for that as well. Look, all together, our reforms not only save lives, but here's the point people don't talk enough about. It saves the taxpayers billions of dollars. What we've done so far will save the taxpayers over the next 10 years $160 billion. Taxpayers, lowering the debt. I mean it. Because they don't have to pay the exorbitant price to, that Medicare had to pay before. They're going to pay $35 out of 400 bucks, Folks, and those savings are only going to increase for American taxpayers because it matters. Look, but that's not all the Inflation Reduction Act did. Last summer, I announced under that law, Medicare is going to select, and it's already passed the law, 10 drugs a year, going up to 20 till we get every single drug every year. Drugs treat from everything from heart failure, blood clots, kidney disease, arthritis, blood cancers, and more. And today, I'm proud to announce that Medicare has reached agreement with all manufacturers on all 10 drugs selected in the first round of negotiations. The new lower prices for all 10 drugs will go into effect in January of 2026. Not this January, 
next January. Negotiations cut the price of these 10 drugs for Judy and others who are Medicare nearly 40 to 80 percent, depending which drug it is. Let me give you one example. Non-insulin diabetes drugs cost $530 a month. Some of you may know that. Guess what? It's now only going to cost $115. By the way, these new prices on 10 drugs would cumulatively mean $1.5 billion less out-of-pocket for patients to the drug companies. Yeah. Lower co-pays for many of the 9 million seniors who take these drugs. But that's not all. We're also saving the American taxpayer because of the new changes, $6 billion a year, because Medicare won't have to pay out that much. Imagine that. $6 billion a year. But we could do that for child care and health care and so much more. We're just getting started. Under the law I signed, Medicare can negotiate lower prices for another 15 drugs next year, 15 the following, and 20 after that till every drug is covered. That's the law. Now, now. This is another really big deal. It means that Americans can save more money on from life-saving medications they need and deserve. And bring peace of mind. It's hard to explain. Kamala and I are going to keep fighting to lower the prescription drug costs for everyone, not just seniors. Yeah. It's a fight that we have to continue. Yeah. Folks, but guess what? Surprise, surprise. Big Pharma doesn't want this to happen at all. The pharmaceutical industry last year spent $400 million lobbying the Congress to stop this. $400 million. Worked pretty well. They didn't get one Republican voting for against them. They all voted for them. Republican allies stuck with them. And the ability of the federal government to negotiate lower drug prices was tried to be stopped. The common line, all of us in this room, we're going to keep standing up for Big Pharma. I fought too damn hard to yield now. We're not backing down. And get this, you may have heard about the MAGA Republican Project 2025 plan. They want to repeal Medicare's power to negotiate drug prices. Let Big Pharma back to charge them whatever they want. Let me tell you what our Project 2025 is. Beat the hell out of them. I mean it. In January 25, total percentage of costs will be capped at 2,000 no matter how expensive they are. And some are expensive as 12 a year, 12,000 a month, I should say. Kamala Harris and Democrats in Congress will make sure that $2,000 cap covers everyone, not just seniors as well. Insulin costs, that's 35 for everyone, not just seniors. Our Project 25 will lower percentage of costs for you, your families, instead of handing Big Pharma a big blank check. And look, and in the process, this is what we don't talk enough about, I don't think. In the process, we're going to save the taxpayer. The budget's going to be reduced by hundreds of billions of dollars. Hear me? Hundreds of billions of dollars. Just the first year, the first thing we passed is $160 billion less that the government's going to have to pay out to farm. But guess what? It can pay out for education, it can pay out for health care, it can pay out for so much more or it can just simply reduce the deficit he has exploded. <laughs> Folks, that's what I call a win. Folks, there's more. My predecessor and his MAGA friends in Congress tried to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which is different. Obamacare? They tried to repeal it over 50 times. We stopped them. Along the way, I made the Affordable Care Act even stronger protecting a million more Americans with pre-existing conditions. And guess what? There's over 40 million. MAGA Republicans in Congress don't want to cut Medicare, and so they, they want to cut Medicare and Social Security. Why? They want to give another, here's what they're proposing, just so you know what the budget is. They're proposing another $5 trillion tax cut for the mega wealthy. By the way, this guy we're running against, when he was president, 
he gave a $2 trillion tax cut to super wealthy. You know what that was? He generated the largest deficit any president has in American history. I love these Republicans talking about cutting spending. You know, we have a thousand billionaires in America. You know what their average tax they pay is? 8.2 percent. Introduced a bill to say that you have to pay a minimum of 25 percent. You know what that would raise? $500 billion over the next 10 years. Imagine what we could do with that. Imagine the taxes we could cut for ordinary people. Well, look, <coughs> Kamala and I have a better idea. We're going to protect Medicare and Social Security and make sure the wealthy pay their fair share. That's how we're going to pay for it. And by the way, that means making the tax code fair. Look, in addition, we're also announced steps to crack down on anti-competitive practices in health care. How many of you no, we've been going after things called junk fees. Junk health insurance plans. But that, that ones that look affordable, when you take the cover off, you find out there's a number of hidden costs. We're going after them and trying to get rid of them. We're also cracking down on surprise medical billing. For example, when a patient goes in the hospital for surgery, if it turns out his anesthesiologist is not in his network, you can get a surprise bill for another thousand dollars. But we're stopping that too. We're protecting a million health care providers. We're protecting one million Americans every month from unexpected medical bills. We're working to ban the use of medical debt on credit reporting. Years ago, I had two craniotomies because I had aneurysm. My bill, if I didn't have insurance, was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, guess what? It matters. It matters whether or not, if I didn't have insurance for the rest of my life, I couldn't do anything. I wouldn't be able to buy anything, wouldn't be able to have a credit, wouldn't be able to. But now we're going to get rid of health care costs being on your. You have to still owe it, but you don't have to get your credit done effectively. Look. I'm a capitalist. I have no problem with companies making money, but not by price gouging seniors and working families. I grew up in a family where my dad used to say, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. And I really mean this. This is what he would say. My dad was a well-read guy. I never got a chance to go to college. He'd talk about what we needed to do for ordinary working, hardworking people. We changed the whole way we look at the economy. Used to be this idea of trickle-down economics. Even Democrats accepted it. Some Democratic presidents accepted it. That if you're wealthy, makes a lot of money, it'll trickle down to the rest of us. Well, I didn't notice a single penny trickle down on my dad's kitchen table. But guess what now? We measure everything the following way. We build from the middle out and the bottom up, and if they do well, everybody does well. Not a joke. And any money I get to spend as president, I spend it on being made in America by Americans. <laughs> Americans don't like being played for suckers. We believe we should be patient, but there should be reasonable profits, not unreasonable profits. Look, let me close with this. It's all about health care. It's about lowering costs for families. It's about fairness and security. It's about the dignity for people like Judy and millions of Americans all across the country. That's exactly what we're doing. There's more we can do for everyone. We can't give up. They told me every major piece of legislation we passed to give us the strongest economy in history and the strongest economy in the world. We got more to do for working people. And by the way, everybody does better when there's more unions. But we're finally getting it done. We can't stop now. We just have to remember who in the hell we are. We're the United States of America. And there is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity in this country to work together. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'll tell you what, I thank God that in the last three months I'm President of the United States, 
I was able to finally get done what I tried to get done when I was a young senator 30 years old. Thank you, God. Thank you. God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Thank you.